Yeah. Was it mostly the way the audience responded to him and how oh, you saw the connection? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was like my uncle's a god. Like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> I heard like that whole like introduction that Bruce gave him, and um, which is like, I learned all these new things about him that I didn't know. Um, yeah. And I, at that point, I thought that He Man was the master of the universe. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Yeah, so I, I walked out of there just convinced that the saxophone was like, like you know, the thing to wield to control the destiny of men. This is Tokyo tonight. Tonight. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on, man? <laughs> nothing much. Nothing, nothing at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know those feels. I get it. <laughs> yeah. um, the album's great, by the way. I, I listened oh, thanks, to it. Man. Love. Oh, uh, yeah. So fucking great. And you did it right before the pandemic, though, which. Uh, yeah, it was perfect timing. It was, mm, yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't. Have you gotten to like. Uh, you know go out and do anything or no not yet uh yeah we did a little bit of promo before before everything got locked down yeah. um you know but we were just getting ready to get a full full blast right when uh yeah when the world ended so yeah yeah uh, <laughs> and now open to rise from the ashes um in the near future so, <laughs> yeah that'd be great i would love that if that <laughs> happened uh i feel like every musician that we've had on is basically either they were working on something right before the pandemic hit and had to come back from someplace or they create they were still working on something they're like eh, this will be a few weeks tops and then it lasted for you know two years it's yeah, still going true. john it's still going i know I just, yeah i just got over it because <laughs> yeah, yeah, i got the gig <laughs> so when oh, i went gigged, i end up getting it and i'm like all right there goes january i'll yeah, see everybody yeah. in february but i'm hoping God, i think i think man. we're gonna come back now I'm, I'm i'm excited and hopeful isn't it amazing how long we're able to hold our optimism? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you guys. I was like, all right, two weeks, we can do this. Yeah. And uh, right, another another couple weeks. And uh, wow, that was a crazy year. <laughs> it's, it's coming back. Yeah. Any day. <laughs> it's, it is weird. And all the different phases, too. It's like it's the bread making phase, the pizza phase. Wordle is in there. Like, there's different eras of COVID. <laughs> Do you know what I was just thinking? Through. Is I I haven't had a drink in so long. Oh yeah. And in the beginning, I went from I went from drinking all the time with like with friends on like, Zoom and this and that. And yeah. now I'm like, ah, oh, but I'm I haven't been drinking. It's it's like a weird shift in. It's a shift in focus, but it's good. So it's allowing me to do uh, wake up earlier so we could do there morning shows. Yeah. Oh, wow. It sounds like you're in a healthy state of mind there, Mr. Social Drinker. That's good. <laughs> I am only a social drinker. <laughs> That's what I realized during this whole thing, too, is like I didn't have – I had it in the house, but it was nobody to hang out with and drink with. So I just never did it. And then yeah. people were, like, getting on Zoom calls, and they were like, we should all have a drink. And I was toasted, like, by a sip and a half. I was like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I was, like, slurring. That's hilarious. Yeah, so once true. it wasn't the camera going out of the Wi-Fi, it was just me. <laughs> yeah, that blows. John's napping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Miller light, and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> completely passed out. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. So, did you like from the beginning when you were a little kid? Did you picture being a musician right out the gate? Like, was that like your dream job, or did you? Uh, uh -huh. Did you want to be a doctor? Well, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. This is um, makes no sense at all. But so my father was in the Marine Corps. He's a, a, a band director for the Marine Corps. So I, you okay. know, I, my family is just they're just I don't know, music's just a part of, of yeah. our identity. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really understand it was like I don't know anything, right? Because it's just like what you grew up with. Yeah. But my dad was in the Marine Corps, and I loved animals. So like I decided that I wanted to be a marine biologist. Wow. A, nice. Okay. A, a biologist in the Marines. Oh, <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> oh, 
That's great. He's like, I didn't want to take care of dolphins. I wanted to create biological warfare, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I never much actually more put those two together that far, but uh, yeah, <laughs> all of a oh, sudden man. we just see a bunch of dolphins in marine outfits. We're like that's all Jake <laughs> Clements. He really started this program. The lasers, off. man. Yes, the lasers. laser music. <laughs> yeah. We had, we just had uh, uh, we had Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway on, and he originally oh, wanted cool. to be a marine biologist too. Yeah, when yeah, he was a kid, that's, that's what he wanted. Yeah, the other type awesome. of marine biologist. Yeah, probably. The yeah, other the other. One. Yeah, the, <laughs> the yeah, special they're... forces biologist. Right. Uh, <laughs> You both wanted to control Atlantis at one point, is what I'm going to say. <laughs> Gives a whole asked. new meaning to Navy SEAL. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> That's exactly, yeah. I missed my calling altogether. I, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was like, I was like, you know, five or six years old at that time. And uh, it wasn't until I was eight when I saw my uncle play for the first time uh, with E Street and that, like, that's when I realized, like, oh, this is a thing. Like, like <laughs> yeah. wow, like, music is, like, a thing. It's not just, like, what we do at home. And mm -hmm. it's not just, yeah. like, you know, uh, it's not just a job. It's, like, a thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I was taken from there. So, from was that it, point on. Yeah. Was it mostly the way the audience responded to him? And how oh, you the connection? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it was, like, my uncle's a god. <laughs> <laughs> I heard like that whole like introduction that Bruce gave him, and um, which is like, I learned all these new things about him that I didn't know. Um, wow. and I, at that point, I thought that He Man was the master of the universe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Yeah, so I, I walked out of there just convinced that the saxophone was like, like you know, the thing to wield to control the destiny of men. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, wow. And uh, yeah, and so I you know I left that show and told my dad I wanted to play saxophone. How'd he and, take it? Uh, well, you know, he was like a militant Southern Baptist strict mm -hmm. man and uh, insisted like, okay, you can do that. But um, you have to play piano first and uh, and prove wow. yourself there. So, you know, wow. it was like basically like you got to do the push-ups, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I did that for a couple of years and then was finally allowed to pick up a horn. How did you wow. take to the piano knowing that you had to play that first? Did it did it feel like you were being forced to do it? Or were you oh, like, for oh, sure. this is fun? Oh, okay, yeah. No, I was pissed about it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hated it. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> consequently, uh, I love it now. Like, Okay, that's it's, good. It's yeah. like maybe my favorite instrument now. But like wow. at the time, it was, uh, yeah, it was just a means to an end. It was just like, you know, how do I get to where I want to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the first yeah, thing you learned it on it? Do you remember? On the piano? You got to hate that uh, song. <laughs> <laughs> I think it may have been like Hot Cross Bun. <laughs> I was thinking yes. that in my head, but I didn't want it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm not fond of it. Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> I, would, I think anybody who says they love Hot Cross Bun should be mentally checked. <laughs> like, that's like, like this guy's you not know, good. The thing I think of, I think, I think the thing I don't like about it is, um, I also don't like hot cross buns. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that connection that is uh, yeah. like just not really worth mark thinking for me. about. <laughs> <laughs> they look so good. They look delicious. <laughs> and then they're always dry and like not as fun as they look. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be like amazing. That little sliver of icing, like like, oh, yeah. you know, like that's <laughs> rude. sliver. Of not enough icing is often a problem on a lot of things. <laughs> like, if you see a little icing on something, you get mad. You're like, what the fuck That's happened it. to this? That's it, man. Cinnabon yeah. ruined it for all of us. So now you uh, made your way from piano over to it. Yeah. And then did you, were you more of, a, were you more enjoying it as an individual, like you taking on music? Or did you want to get into like a band and group early on? Wow. Look at that. That's a good question. Um. All right, so I mean, like the easy answer to that is like saxophone is not a ton of fun by itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, can we get Kenny G in the room, please? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> not in the yeah. history of ever has anybody just randomly referenced Kenny G out of the place. <laughs> Bring it in. Well, I was gonna say I mean, like big like we had uh Dion from Dion and the Belmonts who did the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was saying that his inspiration for the Wanderer was Big Al Sears playing wow. the saxophone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, when I saw him, he's That's like, cool. it changed my world at the Apollo. He's yeah. like, I went back home and I made the guys start doing the horn parts. 
that's like, amazing. Right, so maybe the sex could be something somebody could blow you away, like blow oh, you away. Oh, for sure, no, no, no. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. Sex is an amazing instrument. It's an extremely powerful instrument. Yeah, I'm just saying, like by yourself, like when yeah. you're like, you know, yeah, you're not gonna go to see a show of someone playing saxophone. No, but it'll be no kicking ass like, if you see a busker, like like killing it. Yeah, like, fair right enough. Up. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. Busker. Yeah. yeah, but it's 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 a communal instrument, though. Is the point? You know, like it's, right, it's meant yeah, to be yeah. played with other people. You know. That's yeah. when it sounds its best, in my opinion. I yeah. mean, I certainly enjoy playing by myself, um, you know, like when I'm practicing or whatever. But, like, it's uh, it's just a different experience when you're with other people. And yeah. that's different than, like, the piano or the guitar or um, yeah. really anything that you can play you know, chords on. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I guess when I was a kid, like, I I, I always envisioned playing with, with other people um, mm -hmm. on the sax. And, uh, yeah, and then I was like, I was like, I don't know, 22, and I got uh, I got let out of a band that I was in, and uh, uh, how did that happen? And it, it, uh, well, basically, like we'd started touring, and it was like, well, there's five of us, uh, and we're poor. Uh, <laughs> wow. So you know, it's like the revelation of like saxophone was like a luxury instrument, you know, like when you come right. up on hard times, you get yeah. you get rid of the boat, you know. <laughs> so, uh, oh man. If you got the boat and you can keep the boat, man, like, you know, you're balling, right? Yeah. yeah. I got a boat. But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you can't afford the boat, you got you to gotta get rid of the boat. That's, uh, and that's, that's, that's where I was. So I, yeah. uh, and that's when I picked up the guitar. Uh, seriously. You know, so you know what's like, odd ah. about that story is I actually now understand why my parents did get rid of their boat. Because I never, <laughs> <laughs> up until this point, I was like, why the fuck would you get rid of a boat? And I think that perfectly explains it. <laughs> There you go. We had yeah. one when I was a kid. Where the fuck did it go? And now I know. <laughs> yeah, it was either keep the kid or the boat, John. <laughs> Personally, I would have gone with a saxophone, honestly, out of the two of them. <laughs> That's probably the better choice. Uh, do you, I read this. I don't know if it's true because everybody kind of gets mixed up with where they started. But did you start in a, or, uh, in a jazz band? Uh, I went to school for jazz. You yeah. went to school for so, jazz. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and was that I, something know, that... Yeah. that that helped you out like with uh with like other bands and stuff like that because jazz i mean i feel like that's so freeing when you're playing like that but if you're in a band you have to be more you know what i mean like is it a different type of collaboration between a jazz band and then a rock and roll band yeah for sure absolutely mm -hmm. do you yeah, like I mean, one more than the other um oh well, they serve different purposes you know okay uh it's uh yeah, really, really bad analogies in my head right now. I'm like, <laughs> do them. That, that'll, these, those are the best clips, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> He's like lamb and tuna fish. Like, one, one's like pasta and one's like sushi. Right? Like, like, two different things that serve two different purposes. But they, I don't, they're both foods. So I don't know. Right? Uh, bad analogy. Apologize. No, uh, no. <laughs> No one's um, gonna blame you here for like oh we just lost four hundred viewers that was nice. don't do any more <laughs> don't do any more pasta sushi shit the Italians are furious uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not your viewers I'm worried about <laughs> well played <laughs> well done well done Did you, you know what oddly enough it? neither um, am I <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so you know it's just it, 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 they, they serve two different purposes like I don't know like um, there's actually a lot of rules in jazz. Um, actually, I, I would even go as far as to say that there's there's a lot more rules in jazz than there is in rock and roll. Wow. Um, al although you know, jazz is, is is really focused around imp improvisation, so it's I don't know. You got these guidelines you got to stick in and stuff. Um, but uh, and that's not true. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> it's it's all relative, man. It's all relative. It depends on who you're playing with. There was such a great, purely games. honest moment of like, you're like, no, I've had those a million times. I love that you just did that. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. <laughs> you just All of a sudden you pull out like an actual bottle of scotch. Like, guys, let me just break it down for you. I've been in this fucking pandemic for. <laughs> That's fucking great, man. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's weird. Like uh, a lot of the, a lot of the times people come on here too, and I feel like we've all got this memory thing because they they legitimately have been talking about like how this whole experience like that we're living through now too just kind of affects the way you think. Like it's kind of changing mm -hmm. stuff. Like you're constantly dealing with uh, trauma without actually having to acknowledge stuff too. But I swear to God, I could literally map out uh, 
an entire clip reel of guests and me and everybody just going and forgetting like your own name where we're like, what the, where was I born? What's the name of the city <laughs> with the, and you're just like ask, you know, it's, it's the weirdest shit dude, but everybody's just blanket on stuff. Now it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you don't feel alone, which is really great about it. You're just like, Oh my God, are you losing it too? Cause I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also don't know. <clears throat> It's fucking oh, awesome. Geez. Was it what was it like writing this album though? Because you have a lot, I think, on here. Um, like I love the song, I love democracy that's on that's off of this. Um, and I don't know um if you were maybe influenced by your uncle and 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 by that kind of a thing, but how do you feel about using uh music to kind of express how you're feeling, how you're, how you're thinking, maybe politically, maybe stuff like that? Like, do you yeah. did that come naturally to you? Start young, or how did you get into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started writing music, that was uh, that was very much. I mean, that was everything for me. It was it was, it was a way to com communicate like how I felt inside. You know, um, nice. I'm a very emotive writer, just in general. It's just how I process mm -hmm. the world in my day and whatever else. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like when I was before I even started writing uh, music, just like in writing poetry and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, that's how, that, that, that's just how I dealt with myself. You know, it was my cool. therapy session. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and in regards to this album, you know, like, there was so much going on at the time. Uh, I, I had a hard time with, you know, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to talk about politics per se. Mm -hmm. um, my whole thing has just been more about like the human condition, you know. Yeah. Um, and but I also wanted to acknowledge like where things were, you know, the reality of like where the, the, the condition that we're in, you know, right, the state that we're in. It's hard not and, to acknowledge um, it. Yeah, I mean, especially at the time, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the the big election coming up, and you know, things were getting nuts, man. Um, I mean, they still are. They still are. Mm -hmm. Um, for whatever reason, I feel like it's a little bit less heated than it was then. I mean, unless you start talking about Ukraine or whatever. But yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. There's always something looming in the background now. <laughs> right, right. You're like, yeah, yeah. As, soon as, as soon as anybody says like, uh, like, yeah, I feel like things have calmed down a bit, like 50 things just pushed to the front of your brain. Like, actually, yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah. somebody reminds you how things are still slightly terrible. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, I mean, that said, though, like, you know, there, there has been this sense of um i don't know like the this whole pandemic just like you know, like, like leveling things um giving perspective the last, yeah, yeah the last two years like we've all been in the same situation you know yeah yeah um, absolutely. we've all been dealing with the same things we've been dealing with it differently but mm -hmm. like the reality is the same for all of us you know? oh yeah yeah sure um so and, and you know hopefully we walk out of this thing um you know with a little bit more context for uh each other and uh, a little bit more empathy, you know, ideally. Agreed. Um, but uh, yeah, and, you know, like that, that was kind of just like the idea of the record, you know, was kind of just to address those things um, and, and remind people of, of, of empathy and the importance mm -hmm. of it, um, you know, to maintain some sense of human connection with each other. Yeah, it definitely comes and, through uh, because there is a lot of that element to it, too. Like it didn't get too heavy into, you know, what was cool about it, um, which I don't have a problem with this either, but I did like that it wasn't so heavy handed with political uh, you know what i mean like it was yeah. it made it <clears throat> it made it very um uh accept uh, accessible for anybody listening to it so yeah. i don't i don't yeah. think it mattered you know you know it didn't make you think too hard about where what lines you had drawn yourself personally if you were just listening mm -hmm. to the music and the lyrics you could connect with it yeah awesome yeah. i mean that was the hope you know that was the hope. Yeah. I, I definitely i didn't want it to be i didn't want the album to be more divisive than things that already been i wanted it to be a way to right for us all to acknowledge like, yeah, we're in a bad situation, you know, mm -hmm. and we need, we need to, we need to do whatever we can, whatever side of the fence you're on. Like we need to do whatever we can to fix it. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And like music is a unifying thing. It's always been able to break walls and boundaries and bring people together. Yeah. So I feel like it's so important to have people like you that are give that are not only utilizing that medium to push it even further to like really show yeah. people like, you know, it's, Everybody is the same, like when you cut down to the core of it, right? It's just That's a matter it, of, yeah, yeah. Real. We're all looking for acceptance. We're all looking to be loved, and uh, we're looking for ways not to hurt. Right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. That's I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were talking about leveling the playing field and stuff like that, like during this, you know, pandemic, which obviously it did kind of level it for a lot of us. Did it change your uh, perception of the music industry, of how maybe you were going to go about it, like, or is it still kind of evolving? 
Oh uh, yeah, for sure. It's, I guess it's evolving. I, I mean, like things stopped, you know, yeah. a, a dramatic hard stop. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it went, when the, when, when things first got locked down, um, I, it was actually somewhat convenient. Um, I'd intended to like do a lot of touring, uh, mm-hmm. in 2019. And, uh, but I, I was taking like two months off because I had a, a new baby girl, um, that oh, arrived. Hey, congrats. Congratulations. Uh, very nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she, uh, I said 2019, 2020, right? So, um, 2020. <laughs> yeah, she was born February 2020. So, uh, <laughs> but you so made her was, in 19, so it's okay. There you go. She was yeah. coming in 19, she was on her way. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> uh, we'll cut it so it makes born... it look like you're just compa- passionate about the conception and the birth and the whole. Right, exactly. yeah. <laughs> when she watches this later, she'll be like, he really cared. <laughs> it was a warm May evening and uh... <laughs> magic. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know, um, I was planning on taking some time off because you know she was she was on her way and she was going to be there. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was around for for her and to get to know her a little bit. And uh, yeah, coincidentally, I ended up being well. She she has not known me to not be there. <laughs> in oh, two yeah. years so um yeah so uh you know it started off as like a an extended paternal leave you know yeah and, that's um, that is good timing in a sense yeah yeah I feel like everybody has to find their own silver lining about the panda in a way like i mean obviously there's no question a lot of shit happened but i feel like everybody's got something like you to say like oh it was an extended parental leave you know what i mean yeah and then like everybody else kind of figures out time to reassess their, their career, their life or whatever, something, something else came out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is the, that is the positive uh, light, you know, like the, 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 there's certainly other ways to look at it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Which I struggle with, to be honest with you. I hear you, man. I know. You know That's why you have to find like some other way to put it. Are you, yeah, um, but- are you, do you follow the kind of, cause I know like one thing that's going on in the music industry right now is, uh, you know, Neil Young kind of pulling out of Spotify. And I know everybody's got their issues with Spotify to comedian. I mean, comedians, we all got like ripped off the platform completely because somebody was like, Hey, can you pay us a little more? And they were like, Nope. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just, yeah. they, every, every comedy album, every piece of stand up that's on there is removed, uh, you know, temporarily. But um, I don't know. Yeah. Did, did you like, I mean, the, do you have any opinion on the Neil Young thing? Cause uh, you know, I don't want to put you uh, on the spot either if you'd rather not comment because everybody's like beholden to something. But <laughs> I'm sure I've got really strong feelings about it. I, I this is the first I've heard of it though. This oh really? Is, oh really? Is, yeah, I haven't heard oh, of it. Oh yeah. well, breaking let me fill news. In. Yeah, this right is great. <laughs> so so Neil Young. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um yeah, everyone's like, please don't ever do that again. Uh, <laughs> You're right in our ears. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Neil Young uh, had this letter that he that he'd written and posted on social media that was basically like, it's either uh, me or Joe Rogan. You have a choice, Spotify. I either remove all of my work off of your platform. Wow. Yeah. Or and he's like, I don't you know, he's putting out misinformation about the pandemic and and it's hurting people, you know, um, and ineffective. So, you know, one wow, or the other. Awesome. And Spotify um, removed his music. Good for him, man. Yeah, I know, right? That's the way I feel too. And it's amazing that people don't understand what he just did. You know, um, uh, yeah, yeah but... it stands on principle. That's, that's, huge. that's huge. Exactly. Yeah, he's incredible for doing that. Um, it is, but it's like everybody, is, of course, is now flipping out and taking, you know, different. I love the people who don't understand that rocking in a free world. Like, they don't understand the context and the nuance of that song. They're like, <laughs> so much for rocking in a free world, right? And I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, have you morons fucking listened to that song? <laughs> like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like when uh, wow. Bruce and, um, oh my God, I'm going to blank yeah, on Reagan. who the hell else, but sang uh, uh, Fortunate Son during oh. like, the, and they were like, how oh, ironic. I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard the song? I'm like, right, right. It's, it's yeah. Just, I thought you were going with the, uh, well, you know, Ronald Reagan trying to play Born in the USA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking good though when they do shit like that you're like what, what, just what is that? did he really just do that yeah <laughs> it's crazy yeah. are you yeah. um did you were you able to go back out a little bit and, and do some shows before this wave hit 
Uh, yeah, we did a handful of shows. Um, I think like six or seven uh, in the fall. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah, which was like, you know, exhilarating and brief. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my, my dad my daddy always uses this analogy of like um, it's like having one shrimp ah that's a good one <laughs> you know? like, just that's great to piss you off you know like <laughs> yep <laughs> oh that's shrimp. hilarious that's so good <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Or like a sliver of icing on your hot cross buns. I, might say. <laughs> um. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Just, that was great. Good, good full circle callback. I love that. That's it. Name yeah, of the but... episode is now hot cross buns. <laughs> hot, cr- hot, hot cross buns with Jake Clemens. Yeah. Tom, write that shit down. I'm not even kidding. I am. You know? oh, good. It's a pen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've been trying to figure uh, out how to name the because in, in the beginning when I started the show we were I was doing it like uh, um, Captain's Log almost you know what I mean where I was like <laughs> literally like the first the first episode of the show was called Day One <laughs> it was just like you know you whatever and now I'm like I should maybe lift it up a little more <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're getting into Day Hundred and fucking something I don't know how long I... <laughs> yeah right exactly. <laughs> And draw like the lines and like oh yeah, it's like yeah. the memoir of a man that lives in a cave <laughs> day 179 i haven't cut my hair so i uh, i guess it might as well just be like that um yeah it's just cool yeah i know what you mean getting the taste of going out and performing and shit like that was it was it weird to leave your daughter behind though like is that like uh like you think more than uh, uh how'd she yeah, she's fine <laughs> we gotta say I, i'm like do they i don't have i have a cat so i just want to my frame of reference for you know how that is yeah to none. yeah yeah um, uh no the kids are fine man. They're, they're, yeah. they're good you know you know uh it's nice because they're happy to see you when you get back that's the thing so, right yeah um, yeah my cat wanted me to leave so i don't understand any of that <laughs> like, get the fuck out still here yeah <laughs> <laughs> literally walks uh, into a room i'm in like you live here you still live here that's weird yeah <laughs> that's fucking uh, yeah the, the shows were cool i mean uh, it, it was a lot of fun to get back out um it, it was a little bit weird because i hadn't been i hadn't been on certain um or seen live music you know uh yeah and uh and most of the audience is in the same boat so there's yeah. a sense of like trying to remember what you, you know what it's supposed to feel like right you know and and meanwhile it's like God, I hope I don't get sick, you know? Oh, yeah. yes, totally. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, if, like for me, for live shows, like I like to get into the audience. I like to engage the audience, like, you know, really close. Um, yep. So I'll often, like, I'll often, like, you know, jump off the stage and, and, and get right in people's faces. Nice. So I couldn't do that this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and that was hard, you know? Like, I feel like yeah. it took away of an element of the show, and I, I had to dig a little deep, deeper to – to try and like create that sense of intimacy without having to be, you know, in people's faces. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was, a, it was a challenge, but, uh, so we got some shows coming up in March and, uh, we're in New York city again with the city winery there. And then nice. And, uh, oh, nice. We're going to have to come check you out. I feel yeah, like absolutely. Really cool. Aren't you great. Yeah. See you Stone Pony. And then Boston and uh, Manchester, uh, New Hampshire. Oh, cool. Uh, at the Rex theater. Oh, nice, man. Yeah. I wonder if you're going to be in, I'll be in Boston in March. Um, nice. So, yeah, it'd be great if I got to see you in New York and Boston, too. I got to say, the Stone Pony, I love the Stone Pony. I've been there, obviously, to see bands or whatever. I got to actually do a, a benefit for um, musicians or whatever. It was, like, right on the cusp of, like, the, uh, I think, getting vax. I think that was, like, half vax at the time, but they let us come into, like, an empty theater or whatever. And uh, Was it the empty Stone Pony? It was the empty stone. We got to go to the stone pony. Yeah. Yes. And it was the oh, weirdest wow. thing because I, I like, you know, they don't do like comedy shows there really. And they, and just, I've seen like right. all my favorite bands there. I felt so like I didn't belong at all. <laughs> <laughs> like I was more excited about like, can you get a picture with me with the pony in the background? And people were like, you're on TV. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I just want like a quick, <laughs> like, are you all right? I was like, no. You must feel the same way too, like going back out for the first couple times or whatever. Everyone's just so excited to be out. No one cares. Yeah. Almost anything. Yeah. Like, you know, you could play literally probably hot cross buns and they'd be like, I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> People are just happy to be out. This is my jam. <laughs> I would love to see your crowd just react to hot cross buns as being the opening track. 
Oh my God. <laughs> like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Changing things well, up. You, you never know, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so do you, do you like a bigger venue, or you, I feels like you like a more intimate venue to connect to your crowd? Um. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. I, I like them both. God, I feel like I'm like this. I mean, the reality is like, there's no, you know, the energy of a, of a big show, you know, like is insane. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, the energy is, 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 is amazing. But, you know, that said, if, if you have a really small room, you're able to kind of, uh, get a sense of that. Um, you know, if the room is small and it's packed, you're able to get a sense of that, of that same feeling as well. So, yeah. um, I think I like, I like a full room. <laughs> uh, whether it's yeah. big or small, you know that's yeah. that's that's what's exciting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where it's palpable. Yeah. And to go right. back, what I mean, you were saying before, you were saying uh, you were about to say when you if you felt like at a certain point in your career you like felt secure, like you made it. Right. Yeah. I, I think you hit that. I, I think you hit that um, multiple times. You know, I think you hit that, and then you, you feel like, all right, cool, this is it. And then like two weeks later, you're like, mm. <laughs> you know? yep. Maybe there's maybe there's more. Maybe there's more to this, you know. Um, it always happens really quickly too. I say two weeks because it's like it. It seems like that should last longer, but it, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're not easily satisfied, I suppose. But no, the no, first time, not. yeah. God, I remember I was 18 and I was getting in a tour van for the first time, oh. and I was like, "Oh my God, <laughs> I'm going on tour." <laughs> I'm going on. I'm going to be a touring musician. I'm going all over America with seven people in a 15 passenger van <laughs> <laughs> held together by duct tape um, <laughs> and i was like this is it man nice i've been dreaming about this for years and uh and yeah it was exciting you know it was really exciting and and you know you're making like 250 dollars a week and you're like oh my god this i'm able to eat Damn. and yeah. uh you know, not well, but <laughs> <laughs> and you know that, that was the first time I, I think I think I felt like I was like I'm I'm on this road, you know, like yeah, like wow, like I'm I'm on this road, and yeah. um yeah, and then you know eventually like you're you're taking that up a step and then another step and whatever, and I, you know, it's like one of these days, yeah. Yeah. One of these days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your w most wowing moment so far? Hmm. Uh, all right, so there's been a couple, I suppose. If we're talking like, you know, the the big wows. Um geez, I don't know. I mean I can all right. So uh I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll just I'll just throw out a couple like flag posts along the along the along the way. Like like standing on uh, on stage in Hyde Park behind Paul McCartney, uh, oh shit! And just wow. like watching his beautiful hair moving in the wind. <laughs> wow, <laughs> um, that's a wow. that was like you know that was that was yeah that was a pretty significant moment. Where it's just like oh my god, that's Paul McCartney, you know like yeah. Uh, and I'm on the stage. We're yeah. we're playing music together. <laughs> um, yeah. That was a pretty wild moment, and uh, and then in terms of like looking out to the audience and like just being like like oh my god, um, I always thought it was gonna be like Wembley, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we played it, and it was like, all right, I mean that was a that was a show, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just different on the stage than when you're in the audience. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. we played rock and rio in um in uh in portugal and the audience is like on this like sloping hill that like goes out for forever and i don't know how many people were there but it looked like a quarter million or something like that it was like wow it was just wow. insane and you know it's like people zip lining um in the distance you know like really? over the audience and holy shit yeah it was really it was insane man and uh we were playing it like I think we went on like one o'clock in the morning. This is with mm -hmm. E Street, right? So like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. three hour shows. <laughs> 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 like, like, like who who books a three hour show at one a.m.? <laughs> um, <laughs> we did it. And, 
and uh, it was amazing. It was it was a great it was a great experience because the the audience is actually, for whatever reason, like like not super familiar with Bruce's music, you know. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. So we had to work for it. Which wow. Was, like, that's really got exciting, it. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's I was gonna say yeah. that's got to be like a whole other level because you guys usually you know that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, it was the first time I had experienced it with the band. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> um, you know, like, like you, you know, you play a song like Thunder Road, and like, you know, usually like the audience is like singing along and like knows what's going on, and they're just like, "Wow, this is a cool song." <laughs> like, really? These guys oh. might have something here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some guy in the back with like, these kids are gonna be big, big. I tell you. <laughs> Uh, People are approaching it was you. a pretty beautiful moment, though, you know. Um, and and again, like just to look look out and see like that 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 massive sea of people. Yeah, uh, it was pretty surreal. Um, yeah. But there's been other like smaller wow moments. Um, I mean, like I I played for Bill Clinton's inauguration um, in '93, and wow. like, that was like the first. It was like you know I was on stage with like Will Smith and wow. President Clinton, and it was like meeting like Vanessa Williams and Boys to Men, and like you know all these people at the time that were like, I was 13. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, these people were amazing. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, are you yeah, one of those people so, that'll like go up and like actually approach like people like that, like without any fear or are you like, I better not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was 13 and, uh, I mean, this is kind of like a cool story. I don't know. Like I, 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 you know, I, I hadn't been around. This is not weird, I guess, but I hadn't been around famous people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. up until that point yeah you know, gotcha. i guess that's normal right like yeah. i mean e street was like family to me so it, you sure. know, it wasn't they weren't like you know uh famous you know, right, right, right. You know. so uh yeah, yeah. but I'm, we're in like this rehearsal situation and like will smith is standing like a few rows ahead of me just hanging out he's like hosting this um celebration for youth thing that we're doing mm -hmm. and i was just like oh my god like i have to go ask for his autograph like i i have to I, I have to go yeah. do that. So I, uh, I, you know, built up the courage. And, like I walked up to him and like hand like shaking, like uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, can, can I have your autograph? And like he was so cool and so chill about. It. He's like, yeah, man, absolutely. Like, what's your name? Da 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 da. And then he hang out with me for like the rest of the afternoon. Oh, that's so, like, cool. insane. Yeah. yeah, he was just like, <laughs> come on, man, you want to meet some people? I was like, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Took me backstage, like knocking on the door, Vanessa Williams. Hey, Vanessa, this is Jake. Was, uh, he wanted to meet you. And she's like, oh, come on in. I was like, oh my God, I'm in Vanessa Williams dressing room. This is insane. <laughs> and he's like, who else do you want to meet? <laughs> you want to meet Boys and Men? I was like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I don't know, whatever. Like, we just hang out. And, uh, and it was the first, like, really significant, like, you know, I'm, at, I'm doing the same gig as these people. And, and you know, like I don't know, for me, just acknowledging that like something real is happening. That's awesome. You know? Yeah, like you're on the inside yeah. now. It's it's a totally different yeah. vibe. Yeah, right. and it, and to have right. somebody like Will Smith and of his stature oh, do man. it, and just like that's amazing. In '93, right? Like, yeah, Fresh Prince was the biggest thing in the in the world at the time. Yeah, yeah. in my world, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. No, in, in most worlds. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I was like, I just the theme song just started playing in my head as you said it. I was like, yeah. it's already there. there I'm already. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I haven't seen him since good. then. But uh, oh no. I, well, I, I'm looking forward to sharing that story with him one day. Yeah, man. I think incredible. it's gonna be amazing when you do bump into him again and be like, you know what? You were so, <laughs> so nice. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's one of those guys that like, because I feel like a lot of people post like, uh, you know. Um, you know, it's inspirational quote or whatever, and you're like, oh, they're just doing it, you know, to to get light. Like, that guy, when he says stuff, I, I'm like, he he seems genuine. He seems like he lives what he says, and he yeah. believes it. He just seems like the coolest fucking dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, you know, and it's it's like I don't, I never. Whenever he's got something he's talking about, I'm always like, and he posts it, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking listen. Like, yeah, seems seems like one of those guys. It's cool to know that he did that. It's nice to know that people that you actually do like are really nice to people. You know? That's the thing, yeah. yeah you never I've know. Heard horror stories, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't encountered many of those horror stories myself. That means um, there's one in there. Go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah. no. I, I can't. I can't really think of anything that's like you know. Like I've been really lucky, you know, in, in terms of like meeting your heroes, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't gone out of my way to do it. I mean, like, <laughs> I would famously like 
uh, and catering whenever they like in, in the UK or um, even in New York uh, back in like 2012, 2013, um, I would watch the door to make sure that David Bowie wasn't going to come in the room because oh. um, I'd have to leave immediately. You know, like <laughs> I was such a huge fan. Um, like to me, like he was like, the greatest performer, you know? Um, yeah. I admired him so much. Uh, so I was like, I, I, I swore I'd never see him in concert and I would, and I never wanted to meet him, you know? Wow. Like, and not because I was afraid necessarily that he was going to be a jerk. It's just that like, I don't think I'd be able to handle it. You know, I know exactly what you mean. There's a much. few people on my list that I'm like, I think it's better off that I just never, never meet them because I'm not, what are you, it's almost like, what are you going to fucking, what are you going to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what could you pop? Yeah. And, and sometimes they're so big. <laughs> You're just like, what could we possibly relate to? And yeah. it, you know what I mean? Like, like it'd be like if, uh, you know, um, like I've heard like a million stories about Prince where I'm just like, what could you, this guy, you know, could get yeah. whatever he wanted at the drop of a hat yeah. at the weirdest, like all the stories of what could we, what, what is he possibly going to relate? <laughs> what am I going to, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he's yeah. Child. yeah, exactly. I gave him basketball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, what actually, do. No, I know. Ex yeah, exactly. When he would have easily defeated me. I'm, <laughs> I'm Keebler elf size. That would have been. Right? I would. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We I actually have one of our, uh, <laughs> one of our fans who's actually also military. Said he remembers. He remembers that inauguration. He was working a detail for some of the political figures. He's a great guy, Mike Rowe. So he he served overseas and would take like the comedians and performers when they were doing oh, the cool. USO tours. Yeah. And I hope nice. Mike, I hope you've been here the whole time because uh, Jake comes from a military family as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? Small nice. world. You said micro, and I thought maybe it was Dirty Jobs guy. Different, different, <laughs> different, different micro. You know what's crazy? We did a <laughs> we did a benefit for Mike, and every time we were like, hey, we're doing a benefit for micro, and they were like, the Dirty Jobs guy? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, yes, just give us money. For God's sake, whatever, you, <laughs> whatever helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you happy now? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they would do it even though his photo was in the thing. And we'd be like, oh, what man. the fuck? Yeah, that's amazing. You've had some killer wow moments. You're like, yeah, I got a few. Yeah, yeah Paul McCartney, McCartney, Will Smith. And you, played with the... <laughs> you played with the Roots too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a couple of things. With the what, roots. How old you were young when you did that as well, too? Right, like pretty. No, no, I was like, uh, I don't know, 33, I guess. I mean, like you know, I we I I, I was on the I was on I was on late night. With uh, Jimmy Fallon, right? The first time, really? That it, yeah, yeah it was him. I remember and, that um, one. It was such a crazy, like, talk about surreal moment. Right, right. So that, that's for sure a standout surreal moment because mm -hmm. I walk into a, I walk into a room, uh, a small room, the whole band is there, and I'm like, just like, oh my god, you know, like I grew up on like Illidale Half Life, and you know, like all these, yeah. huge fan of the roots, you know, right? Those kids, and 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 I'm walking in to them playing my music, and I'm like, that's so cool. This so is cool. like what the hell is going on? Like they're they're learning my songs. Like, like I'm not worthy of that. What the heck? You know, it's crazy. <laughs> so uh, so then like we're 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 you know we're going through it together. And um, <laughs> there's a song. There's a song. Uh, the the title track of the EP at the time was uh, "Embracing Light," mm -hmm. and um, and the band's playing it. And I pick up my guitar to play it with them. And um, we're just in rehearsal. And like it sounds horrible. Like, what the hell is going on? So, like, I'm like checking out my guitar, and like it's my everyone else is in the same key. I'm in the I'm in the wrong key, and I'm like, this is my song. How could I possibly be in the wrong key? Uh, <laughs> I, I had forgotten that uh, in the studio, and this like we were doing this like the same week it was released, and in the studio, I had, I had changed keys um, on that song. Uh, I just I brought it up like the whole step. Um, but just in the studio. So I'd never right. played it that way outside of, you know, the recording. Yeah. And they learned the record version, you know. So, oh, uh, wow. yeah. So lo and behold, I looked like a complete uh, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Les Love's like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and like, it was like, clone. it was such like a, I don't know, like a busy moment that like, I didn't even have time to explain it. It was just like, no, I'm, I'm an asshole. That is, that's what I was going to ask you. If you, if you had time to have a good laugh, cause that's the worst when you don't get to explain to somebody how you, yeah. you're like, no, hopefully they're listening. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully somebody's listening right now. We'll clip this out know. and send it to Questlove. <laughs> 
I think the best part is you made a memory because they're definitely still talking about that. <laughs> it had to be like... <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. God, that is good, like, what was going on there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it goes. That's um, so awesome experiences, man. Like, yeah, right? the experiences uh, are, are, I mean, th- yeah, you really have had killer experiences, and it's just it, crazy. Even the McCartney one, you were talking about uh, the energy and the level and stuff like that. Whenever I see, I've, I've seen McCartney live a bunch of times. My mom's like a huge Beatles fan, so we'd go for a birthday when he was touring. And then I've seen Bruce perform. And if you're, are you ever like genuinely amazed at like the level of energy those guys have, like yes. to just keep it's in, doesn't it make you feel, like as younger dude, like, doesn't it, you're like, I'm tired watching this. How the fuck yeah. are they bouncing from like moment to moment? It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is. Give us the inside I mean, like, scoop. I'm... Is it Red Bull priest, pre, like a uh, satanic ritual? What's the, <laughs> what are they doing on stage or behind the doors? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Well, no drugs. I can tell you that. That's good. Yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> think so. Not at this point. Um, I think it's just the, it's, it's like the adrenaline, the, 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 the fountain of youth that is rock and roll, you know, like, it, yeah. it, like once you once you get in that train like it's it's it, it just keeps going and yeah, uh and, and it's amazing um but yeah i mean i'm i'm 30 years younger than those guys you know so yeah. i i i acknowledge that and uh you know here, <laughs> uh 2012 the first night we played dublin um i i'm on stage it's the end of the show i have to sneeze there's a camera in front of me <laughs> and uh, like right in my face and i'm like you know i was raised not to be rude so right. I, and I happen to have a slightly aggressive sneeze. Um, I've got really bad hay fever. I so uh, I, I turn my head away from the camera to sneeze and then sneeze. And in doing so, I tore the lining in my spine. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> it was really horrible. Holy so I, uh, it was like the last five minutes of the show. So uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm able to like stand up at the, in that moment um, and kind of like hobble up to the front of the stage for the, the end of the show and then like everybody bows and i i, I bolt to the back of the stage because i'm dying right oh my god um uh cut to two hours later and i can't move i can't move oh at all <laughs> we have a show the next night so uh being 30 years younger than everyone else on the stage um i uh yeah i i i i, I created a a uh um what's the word i don't know like this record for myself of of, of being the first person <laughs> in the history <laughs> of the east street band wow mind you clarence uh clarence was was uh in bad shape you know at, at the end a, mm. a, a lot however not even clarence in, in his bad shape had ever had uh the, <laughs> the unfortunate circumstance of having to enter that stage on a wheelchair Oh, that was wow. me. <laughs> Did they give you hell for it? Like, were they, yeah, they joking with you oh, the whole time? Are you kidding me? If you can find, um, if you can find audio from that night, you'll hear Bruce ragging on me the whole night. <laughs> 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 I'm in like excruciating, like this horrible, horrible pain. And uh, yeah, he's fucked on me from from the start to finish. <laughs> oh, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is so but, great. Uh, and over a sneeze too. It's not even like you did anything truly rock and roll and like fell off the fucking stage, broke yeah. a leg, like Grohl, like Dave Grohl did. Dave Grohl broke his, you know. But you kept playing though. You did it. You you still kept playing. Yeah, I I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said you had an aggressive sneeze though too, because like that is most. I don't know. Like I I do like when I sneeze, like fucking walls get blown out. Like I understand completely. Oh yeah. I've yeah, yeah, and people get upset about it. They're yeah. like, it's funny, right? Not? Yeah, I would love to not. I'm like, you think Listen, I want this? I got detention in sixth grade <laughs> for sneezing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what did your parents terrible, say? Terrible, but didn't even believe it. Uh, I mean, like, it wasn't like a, detention wasn't uncommon for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. I was gonna say you got to put that teacher on blast detention for sneezing. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But yeah. I can see that fucking happening. It's My friend crazy. and I got thrown out of the class for laughing too loud at some at somebody else. It wasn't even like we were dicking around. We were just like we somebody else did something, and then we just thought it was funny, so we started laughing. And she was like, "You two out!" And we were like, yeah, "What yeah. the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um. 
We got. I got to ask you the three standard questions that we have because we're running it. We're we're getting ready to wrap up. Run out of time. Uh, you're gonna love these. Matzo Don't balls. Matzo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> perfect. I I see you've seen the show before. I, I was I was 17. And, uh... <laughs> oh, those are those are perfect. I'm gonna put those wherever I want now, though. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm gonna recut this whole thing. <laughs> I love shit like that. That's the real dystopia. Uh, <laughs> we try to end careers on this. Show. <laughs> that's the that's the joke that we play on our guests. They're like, "Why? Why would you do this?" <laughs> I had a good thing going. <laughs> Just two people who don't know how to prank well. <laughs> They're like, "I'm in jail. <laughs> My family won't talk to me." We're like, "We know. Isn't that hilarious?" <laughs> You sound like you grew up in my family. That's <laughs> that's another surprise. Uh, no. <laughs> oh god! Not, All right. not a surprise, right, so... John. <laughs> no, I know. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> We're actually on that family tree show that they've got. It's, uh, I I don't even have a podcast. I just twenty three and me, the two of us, and I'm like. Yeah. We got to get him on. I don't know. We'll make a You're show. You're wondering why I said yes. That's... <laughs> I knew all You've about You've been getting it. my letters? Going for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <you> know. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, this is great. I don't ever want to leave. I mean, it's fine. I don't, ha- I don't have to leave. You have to leave. But I don't <laughs> I'm not throwing you out. I'm just saying. <laughs> This is spiraling out That's of like control because I... the polite way of like kicking someone off the show. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, you you want coffee? You want to get out? <laughs> oh God! Fuck. I'm just like, listen, guys, I gotta wrap. Uh, I, have fun. We'll see you. <laughs> it's like, did the host just leave? <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking show. I always think the worst way to say goodbye is, I'll let you go. I'm like, hold uh, on. I'll yeah. decide when you'll let me go. Yeah. yeah. I always say to, to people, let me do anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were letting me stay. <laughs> I get, this, this is what I this is what I do now. I get off the phone with people and I say, "I'm gonna let you let me let you go," and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Exactly." Click. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Let you ponder that for a while by yourself. Click. <laughs> yeah, figure that one out. <laughs> oh man. So first question. Ready? Here we go. Uh, if you can go back in time and talk to your younger self. What piece of advice would you give yourself today that would help you? Uh, start singing. <laughs> <laughs> Stop training dolphins to kill and start <laughs> singing. <laughs> uh, advice. No, I mean, sincerely, I um Oh God. All right. So this is a whole other episode, but, um, so my family used to perform, uh, when I was a kid, we would, uh, my dad, I don't know. My dad was like obsessed with like the Jackson five or something. Um, so we had five kids in our family and we, we would do these shows, uh, as a family. But when I hit puberty, I was instructed to not, not sing anymore. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so, wow, harsh. <laughs> yeah, well, I come from a family of great singers, you know. So they were just like, "Yeah, you, you shouldn't do that anymore. That's not, <laughs> don't do that." And then you know, like I, I would, I would, uh, I, I enjoyed singing. So uh, yeah. on occasion, I would do that, and it was a quick reminder. No, the, <laughs> wow. you're an instrumentalist. <laughs> <laughs> So it was like, you know, uh, 20 years later, like I wasn't, I was 30 years old when I like played my first, like, you know, show as Jake Clemens, um, where I was like brave enough to like get on the stage and like, and, and actually be myself, you know? Yeah. Wow. Um, and, what was the uh, thing that made you do it? Um, I don't know. I guess like, I, I, I wanted to, you know, I really yeah, wanted yeah. to. Good enough. Um, I, I had a uh, I had a lot of encouragement as a songwriter um, mm-hmm. up to that point, and uh, and was just kind of like you know uh, I, <laughs> I saw the movie once. Did you guys see that? Yeah, you know, oh, Glenn Hansard, 
Mark Gator yeah. Glover. It's a it's an amazing film. It's a great, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, Glenn Hansard in the film, like I I, I watched him um, singing on the in, in the movie, and like he's just he he, he was his delivery is like with, with no shame, just like this is who I am, just raw and yeah. and blatant, and like coincidentally he has an amazing voice, but it's almost like he doesn't he doesn't care, you know, he's just like letting it out and um and that had a big effect on me you know it was just kind of like you know what maybe i'll just be me you know i just i'll just be raw and if people like it then cool and if they don't like i'm i'm gonna see my songs right um and that was kind of a turning point for me uh at that, at that time so uh yeah that started things off and um yeah it's, that's awesome really yeah, bizarre man. but uh consequently like uh may june july august September. Yeah, five months later, I was I was opening for him on stage, which was wow. uh, yeah, wow. pretty surreal. Oh, that's a that's fucking awesome, dude. It was pretty cool. So yeah. sick. I hope every uh, Christmas you give your family members that told you not to sing copies of like all your albums and acapellas. <laughs> <laughs> Tables have turned, my friend. <laughs> every Christmas card's an NFT of his voice. <laughs> <laughs> just practicing and I... yeah. uh... <laughs> oh that's fucking great oh my god uh, no, but I, I wish i'd i wish i had i would i had been brave enough to like ignore that earlier you know um yeah, yeah. you know if i could have you know kept that up i think i i i I would have been happy to do that. I mean, you know, but at the same time, like, I, I, you know, things happen the way that they do for a reason. And, sure. And uh, and that is what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the other thing I guess would, would be like to stop being afraid. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was always always scared of like not. Uh, I don't. Know, you, you feel like you got something in you, and you feel like mm -hmm. you got like you know this this um, destiny that's calling you, but like you know that that fear of like jumping off the cliff. Yeah. Um, into like who knows what, and uh, yeah, you know. So I, I think I would encourage myself to like, you know, not fear it, you know, to embrace it. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. It's weird the roadblocks that you that you know as an individual people put up themselves, where you're like the only reason you're not doing it is because you are too scared to do it, or you're worried whether people might think, and it's really yeah. just all in your head. Yeah. 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 And I'll tell you, like I had like, you know, you're talking about like like big moments in your lives uh i had a lot of like really strong encouragement you know mm -hmm. um yeah. and uh and if i hadn't had that i don't i don't know i don't know what would have happened um so i'm, I'm grateful for it but it's it's kind of like kind of bones me out a little bit that i needed as significant of encouragement as i did you know yeah um I did one more quick little story about uh, in, in that regard um the, like when i decided to like to be a songwriter, um, I'd written tons of songs. Like I loved writing writing music, and um, a friend of mine asked me to help him with the song. He he wanted to do a song for a friend's wedding, and uh, I was like, "Sure, yeah, let's, let's do it." So I you know, picked up the guitar and wrote this tune, and uh, he wrote the lyrics, and uh, and I just started playing guitar. Um, so we went to go perform it for this wedding, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was a little nervous. Like I'd only, mm -hmm. I'd only performed on guitar once before, right? Um, so I'm on I'm on this platform with my friend, and he's got this amazing voice. So you know, he, he I wasn't worried about him. But uh, I'm like tuning my guitar up, and you know, people are coming in for the wedding, and uh, this guy comes in, he's got like aviator sunglasses, like a tan suit, and um, short hair, and uh, he, like he just looks cool, you know, like he's a cool looking dude. <laughs> yeah. And he turns around, and I can see. He's got a tattoo on the back of his neck, and it's an F and an F. There's two signature Fs, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "That's Dave Grohl." Oh what? shit! Yeah, holy what fuck! Is, what is he doing here? <laughs> this, I'm in Virginia Beach. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my you know? god! Yeah, and I, so like immediately, I'm like. I'm not a guitar player. Like, uh, <laughs> oh my God. And like, and, and he had been such a hero of mine because he, he had this whole career of like being a multi-instrumentalist and, and that's something that I'd always, um, you know, wanted to do, wanted to be. And, and, uh, and, and he was brave enough to like step out of, 
you know, his comfort zone that he was in and, and start singing his own songs. And, yeah. Um, you know, so, and yeah, it, it's just great music, right? So like, like the color and the shape was huge for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm on this platform and like kind of freaking out and like trying, like trying not to freak out because I got to play this song and uh, whatever, it goes fine. It goes totally fine. And, and then after the, the, the wedding ceremony is over, like I go off by myself and, and I'm like playing a couple of other songs and, and he like he walks up to me, and uh, and like introduces himself, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then like just starts like giving me this crazy encouragement. Like he's like, "Man, you're a great songwriter. You should definitely do that. That's what you should wow. do with your life." I was like, "What? Like, uh, that's okay. awesome, dude." And and like to the point where like we talked for like I don't know like, half an hour until like enough people like, gathered around and kind of crowded crowded the situation. And mm -hmm. just having been around that since I was a kid, it's like, all right, I'm gonna give him a space. And I, like, I walked away, and, well, like left him there with all those people around him. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just didn't want to be, you know, like, you know, one of those one of those people. Uh, yeah, I know what you do. I yeah, I know what it. you mean. So he came and found me. Like he left him, and like he came and found me again. And I was just like, why is Dave Grohl talking? Like, this is crazy. Right. But like that encouragement was so big for me, you know. Like yeah, like, he he he. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it made a huge impact. And and again, like I've I've been around them a handful of times since then, but I haven't mm -hmm. talked to him since then. So it's a uh, uh, it's one it's another one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the day of uh, of of letting him know that that was me, right? Right. Like for sure, he knows who I am, Jake Lemon. Oh yeah. But like, you yeah. know, it was that I was that kid. Yeah, uh, man. I'm not gonna lie, Jake. We're gonna have to have a spinoff cast <laughs> where we just call all the people that have made such an <laughs> impact on you. And be like, listen, I gotta talk to you. You know, who yeah, I, I know who you are. The we're crazy thing is, is that we're we, we're we're gonna have to. I I would I know you'd much rather do it like in the flesh in person, but we're my uh, manager's actually talking to Dave. I know they're talking to Dave Grohl's people about possibly coming on, which uh, we cool. don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a lot. I don't even, I'm one of those people who's like, okay, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you're like, yeah. whatever. But, but if that happens, you got to come back and you got to like, I'd you know, that would be fucking great, dude, yeah. because that would yeah. be amazing. I got to tell you a quick, uh, dumb, me, dumb Dave Grohl story. He was, I was living in LA and, uh, which is weird. LA is one of those places where like, it's where you see celebrities watching stand up, which you don't get anywhere. Like no one gives a fuck anywhere else. Yeah. So like, but like, whatever. So uh, I'm at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank and Dave Grohl was there and he's just in the audience because I think he was seeing like a friend. But, you know, you just happened to be on the show and uh, like an idiot. I wait till the end. I walk up to him. He, he was like very complimentary, cool dude. And I don't know what made me say this, but I went, hey, my mom really loves your music. And he went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I thought that would somehow endear him, to be to him, as opposed to you just saw and said a nice thing and, um, yeah. And he went and he and he. I shit you not, because at the same time I had like the longer longer hair too, and like a little bit of a thinner beard, but almost the same as his. And he went, "Your mom, huh?" I was like, "No, but me, but also, but oh, yeah." And then he was like, Did you, he was "Like, let's just get a picture." And he like grabbed my phone and like snapped a photo, and I was like. I felt like that dude in The Simpsons, like, see you later, Mr. Grohl. Like, and I <laughs> fucking peaced out. But yeah. You see, so you, you had a way better. I mean, at least you ended up cool. <laughs> like, at the end, we're like, if he remembers that later and he's going to be like, oh, God, you were the kid whose mom? Like, me. <laughs> yeah, don't know why I said it. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'll meet him in person again. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't so even trying to do here now. It's it's just good, yeah, it. yeah. No, it's a smart move. I'm not gonna lie to you. We'll get Jake back on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John had the Jake. opposite story as Jake. He kept Dave Grohl kept walking away from him at the bar. <laughs> of... <laughs> like, and my aunt and my granny. <laughs> I was like, God, kid, get away from me. Uh, but oh, I think it's funny. a lot of your energy too, man. I feel like you've had so many of these crazy experiences. Cause I'm, I don't know. I'm big on the whole universe and energy thing. And I'm like, but you put it out there in the universe. So even though yeah. you were scared to, not scared, but you were, yeah, I guess it's still like a fearful of like doing what you're doing. The universe is pushing you to your truth, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're blessed for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's cool because it yeah, totally reflects cool. your whole thing where you're like, I don't have any. I, I don't have a lot of handful of bad experiences with people. And then it's funny because each story you've told after that explains why. 
Because if you if you oh, were just yeah. like, I haven't had, had bad experience with anybody, we'd all be like, oh, there's one. But like <laughs> literally each story you tell when you've met somebody, you can totally yeah. see why they like, you know, you know, gravitate yeah. towards you. It's great. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been, for sure. I've been uh, uh, you know, lot, lots to be grateful for. But uh, again, like, you know, I, I feel like I feel like it's it's kind of a sad story in the sense that like I that I needed I needed that degree of encouragement, you know, to like. My friends around me weren't enough, you know, it was like, right. okay, you're my friend, thanks, you know. Um, yeah. So the you universe sent you granted. Dave Grohl on your first guitar gig. It's like, <laughs> shut up, listen. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what's crazy, though? It's like, we all need, I mean, you know, it's a weird point because every every artist kind of gets to a certain place because of something else, you know what I mean? Whether it's mm. something they find inside of them or the encouragement from their peers or other performers or whatever, because it's like, I don't think people realize how much we ride that kind of high where like how much it means for somebody above us, you know, or who, you know, <clears throat> especially somebody we admire to say something nice or to be like, Hey, look, you're, yeah. you're great or whatever. Like you ride that fucking high for so long. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy how, how much that affects us, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great, like, you know, reminder to, to pass that on. Right. I mean, like, yes. Um, every chance you get to, to, to be sincere, you know, but like when something affects you, you, got, you, you, you have to let people know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, I got I got more questions for you, so get, yeah, get ready. For this one's this one's gonna be. I feel like this might you might have already answered it in some way, but you might have not in another. So what well, had you, to end? You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna get another thirty thirty minute answer. So this is great. You're ready? <laughs> okay. Let's I just I, yeah, I just like to prep people that yeah. <laughs> You could literally stay as long as you want. I don't really. I just I, here's the thing. We always hear from people's, you know, people's whoever, whoever, you know, uh, you guys have or whatever. But they're like, he's just doing an hour, or they're just doing this. Yeah, so yeah. I try to stick to it. But if anybody wants to stay, uh, <laughs> our but, longest uh, <laughs> podcast so far was 89 hours. So don't Jake's worry. Pulling out the plug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, texting my manager here. Just, uh, <laughs> Get me out of there. <laughs> um, so what had to, one of the other questions is what had to end in your life? And it could be good or bad or personal or in your career. But what had to end in your life that led you to where you are today? Oh. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so 2010, I played that, that show. Um, mm -hmm as like Jake Clemens, right? The first like solo um, performance. Uh, at the time, I, <laughs> I was doing estate planning uh, in New York City, um, you know, like working in the financial world, world wearing a business suit, uh, oh, suit and tie wow. every day. Right. Um, now, the reason that I, uh, I had gotten into that business was like, I, I, I enjoyed business and, um, and I had a history with doing television um, a few years before that. So I thought, you know, like, you know, I, I kind of wanted the trifecta, you know, I was like, I'll do television, mm -hmm. I'll do business and, uh, and I'll do music. I'm like, that's going to be my life, you know? Um, yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I ended up doing business like, you know, 90 hours a week and not having time for anything else. Um, wow. And, uh, and I, you know, like I was good at aspects of it. I was good at like helping out my clients, but I was terrible at like, like developing the business, <laughs> uh, <yeah>. um, <laughs> which is important. Right. Uh, if you want to eat, uh, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> it's kind of crucial. Um, yeah. So, you know, that part of it just wasn't, wasn't working out. So, well. um, and I ended up having to like, you know, there was a big, you know, death of, of my life that year. Um, you know, I was married uh, at the time and like, it was what that that was a, a a really hard relationship and like that that ended up like getting cut off at that time and um and uh so there's a split there and then and then and then i walked away from the the, the desk job mm. um and like you know threw my badge in and kind of just went like full force into the music and um nice. it was a crazy moment because like it was the, the impetus of it was like i put up a track that i'd recorded um like at home, you know, like just like a uh, really terrible sounding uh, production of a song <laughs> and uh, well, maybe two songs. And I got an email from somebody in Belgium, um, this uh, really amazing woman named uh, Annika. And uh, she was like, hey, bring your music to Belgium. And I was like, 
okay, uh, awesome. book a wow. show, I'll come play it. And then she's like, okay. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the first show I'd play was in May. And then in August, I was, um, I was flying to Europe to do a, like my first European tour that wow. had been booked like purely off of Facebook. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. And I remember like, I was on, like I'd quit my job and, um, I was living on like beans basically. And, uh, and I was on the plane and was just like, <laughs> the plane took off from New York. And, uh, and, and, and I was like in there for like 15 minutes and was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> what, like, what am I doing? Right. I don't know these people. <laughs> I don't even know if they're real. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm on a plane oh, with my a God. saxophone and a guitar. And like, I have no idea. Like, I, you know, it was, I, start, I started to freak out a little bit. And then, uh, and then like, you know, by the time that the plane was landing, I was like, all right, well, I'm, it, I'm here. Yeah. And uh, I got to just like, I got to just trust it and just go. And um, it, it really felt it like it, it felt as close to like jumping off that cliff as 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 I as I've ever felt. Wow. Um, you know, because it was literally like in here and <laughs> away from everything familiar and um, and uncertain about what was coming. And uh, and I landed, you know, yeah, it was a pretty magical, pretty magical time. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, yeah, that was a great, another great. You're killing it, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are great answers. I do, I do love the, <laughs> I do love that you were in a plane and realized it mid foot. Like what? The, yeah. Like that's the perfect delayed response to anything is when you have yeah. no choice. You can't turn around, yeah. and you're like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and no one around me who loved me, apparently. To be like, <laughs> before I got on the plane. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, it did cross my mind. I was like, wow, he just did this without anybody kind of stepping in. Huh? It's amazing. Uh, like I was like ambition, I, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so fucking crazy. I love that kind of shit though, especially when it works out. If it hadn't worked out, that'd be a completely different story. We'd all would have been like, you learned something that day. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Either way, either yeah. way, you know, like you learn something, yeah. you know, yep. in that moment. Um, and and even if it hadn't worked out, like I, I would have known that. You know, I would have known yeah. that moment. Like, all right, well, this this is not the way, right? You know? But aren't you always better doing that? Wouldn't you always rather live life being like, I gave that a shot, it didn't work out, whatever. Yeah. And then being like, hey, I, you know what I should have done fifty years ago, thirty years, you know? Absolutely. Right. Guess what? I'm never going to wonder again. Right. Should I be a financial advisor? There you go. Exactly. You go. Learn yeah. something. <laughs> I love. I, I related. <laughs> I related to everything you said with the financial advisor stuff because when I started doing stand up, I dropped out of a, a college not to brag, um, and then was like, I'm going to do stand up, and then I got a job at a bank, so I was like, I'll work at the bank, I'll do stand up yeah. at night, yeah. And the funny thing is, is I failed every math course I've ever taken. And I and they and I conned <laughs> this bank into hiring me as a finance like I, it said financial consultant on yeah. my name tag and on my business card. Um, I faked it for at least like two three years, I think, for, something like that. And it was yeah. I was not good at it, not good at any of it. <laughs> uh, I spent petty cash on cake. Um, I, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of things I should not have been doing in that bank. Um, I didn't. You know, I'm pretty sure I'm the reason for the financial collapse at the time, like the housing market. I was like, "You get a house, and you get a loan for a house." And, you know, <laughs> I was like, "I got the paperwork." Down. John's the guy that gave Homer the Mister Plow loan. <laughs> he had a catchy jingle. I couldn't help it. Have you heard it? I'm singing it right now. You said Mister Plow, and it's already in my head. I don't know what you're talking about. Although Barney did get Linda Ronstadt to do his special, so that really, <laughs> I think they kind of cinched it. Somebody gave you all that money, and you thought you'd be Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> I did acted like it was all mine. I'm you like, get a house. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Look exactly. under your chair right now. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who needs money from the ATM? Can you imagine Ding. getting a loan approval that way? Like, Look under your chair. <laughs> <laughs> That would be the coolest oh, load approval oh, guy ever. And, and the yeah. worst part about this is that this was a bank that was inside of a grocery store. It was the first one of the first ones. So people oh, wow. are like shopping with food stamps, getting knockoff, like, you know, like uh, oh, berry loops cereal instead of the fruit, you know. And I'm just like, you want to put down on a money market? And they were like, what? I'm like, follow me this way. I need accounts opened. And I just like <laughs> calling my friends up to make my quota. I used to have the, yeah. the, the bank manager that was like the guy, like he was really rarely ever in the place, but he would call and make these terrible phone calls to people who weren't like doing, doing their job well. But they didn't realize there really wasn't anything they could do to threaten me because I really just was stunned I was there. So he would like yeah. call and be like, have you started looking for another job yet, Poveromo? And I'd be like, have you heard anything? Because I'm really, keep that eye to the ground. Like, <laughs> keep that ear to the ground. Like, keep your eyes peeled, yeah. buddy. You let me know if you see anything at other opening somewhere. And he'd just be like, why isn't this working? And I'm like, because I'm an idiot. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> yeah, I thought, well, yeah. And so, Destiny called. And here you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was, so it all worked out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> third question. Uh, if this was a genuine dystopia, this is my favorite one. And this, this is a genuine dystopia. And, and you know, just buildings falling down, climate change hits, aliens, zombies. How would you want to go out? How would you want to be taken out? What, what would be the way you would be? What kind of supernatural? I mean, oh, man. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's a tough one. I mean, uh... I, I, when you started asking the question, my, 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 the imagery in my head was Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> just mutated uh, hot cross buns coming to life. And, he, and, and Jake's just uppercutting them as he's walking by saving people. Just like blaring with my saxophone like yeah. by itself. Just like. <laughs> uh, That's great. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh. I'm gonna give you a really depressing answer, I guess. Yeah, I go know. for it. Like that's what we like. Um, so, uh, so for the for the record, um, for Eyes on the Horizon, like it, it, it kind of like I wrote a I wrote a story um, that no one's ever read, but uh, but I did write it, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's 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 like this whole saga. It's it's, it's uh, it, maybe one day people people will see it, but um, uh, there's a character in the story, and uh, there's lots of characters in the story. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, they go through this whole like, dystopian adventure and at the end of it, it's, uh, they're like in this space pod alone in the space pod and then just like being shot out into space, um, from earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what this organist group does is they just like send people out. Yeah. You know, kind of like, a, like, a, like who knows what will happen, but maybe something will happen, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess maybe I wrote that. Maybe that's how. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I like it. I, and I, like, I definitely want to read this story now. You yeah. Like this on a cliffhanger. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, man. <laughs> Have you ever read the Martian Chronicles? No. Oh, you got to read that, dude. It's so fucking good. It's, I think it's Ray Bradbury, but it's a uh, um, it takes place in it's <clears throat> it's called the Chronicles because literally it's like documentation, supposedly, of like each trip to Mars that humans have taken. Oh, cool. And the first one isn't a success, you know, or they never hear. Yeah, back. yeah. <clears throat> and then they they get they build the equipment to go back up again. We go back up again. We wind up finding the first rocket, but never being able to make contact kind of a thing. I don't want to ruin it, but like it just keeps going kind of like that. So it's each trip back and forth to the point where like we do wind up on a Martian, you know, colonizing it. And then it goes to where people there don't even remember or realize how they got there. And it's very, oh. but like all the, all the stuff, all the relationships and stuff that happen on that, in that um, book is crazy cool, man. And I think it's got a lot of relevancy. I, today I felt too. like that was leading you to uh, invite Jake into the church of Scientology. That was about to get, <laughs> was about to get there. <laughs> Have you heard of L. Ron Hubbard? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, let me, let me I got this quick. thing. You want to come? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me real quick tell you what's in your shampoo. So... Uh... <laughs> I Before ripped my face out. off and it's just Tom Cruise <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Do you have any big statements, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Leah Remney cuts in and she's like, hold on. Don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> I binge watched that on Netflix for some reason. <laughs> you know what? You know how long it took me to realize it wasn't the one with Kevin James in it. I was like, when is she going to talk about Scientology? <laughs> this is so such far, a this... weird King of Queens episode. <laughs> yeah, like, so far, it's just about her and this guy in a UPS truck. I don't understand. <laughs> I thought she was supposed to warn us about Tom Cruise. <laughs> we have a couple of our, uh, a couple people just also have a couple questions. So I appreciate everybody that didn't make the move from the other platforms over to the Twitch side. And uh, John Bolkman, what's up, buddy? He says, Jake, do you know the name Terry McGovern? I don't know. Oh, of course. Do you? I don't know. Yeah. Terry McGovern's, uh, um, yeah, like, yeah, one of the, one of the most majestic, sweetest souls, uh, um that i've ever encountered i mean he, he he passed away several years ago now but uh yeah come on terry mcgovern um he worked with clarence um for a long time uh back in the day and then and then bruce picked him up um oh, wow, yeah. as well and uh yeah he was like the the keeper of the gates you know with uh with bruce for, for a long time and wow. um, oh that that's actually a, his uncle <laughs> that's what he oh, was cool. saying that's nice. a small world right wow. it's such a small world that's crazy yeah. That and then I was, I was like, I, I was like, I hope somebody one day talks about me like you just talked about Terry McGovern. I was like, so nice. <laughs> uh, he's an amazing, amazing man. Yeah, yeah. That's Looks awesome. Like Thanks for watching. Uh, who? Uh, yeah. I don't, we, we didn't. We That's get his John, name, did we? Undisputed. Undisputed. John, okay. Yeah, he's, he's one of our loyal listeners out there too. And That's then incredible. Mike asked, "Who? What is the strangest celebrity encounter you have had?" Oh man, uh, strangers! You know you got um, good. You got too many good stories. There's a lot bouncing around up there. I'm trying to think, <laughs> like, well, like strange. Uh, um. Uh, so I don't know if this would. I don't know. I. Uh, I was all right. So we were we were doing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, okay. show. And um and uh oh my god. Um I'm totally like having like, a really ridiculous blank out right now. No, it's fine. That's uh, what I said happens earlier. That's what we do here. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, this is great. Geez, it's all for the real, uh, buddy. Uh, <laughs> when when uh, John edits this, it's just gonna be you trying to think of stuff. It's nothing else. <laughs> Psychic Jake Clemens on the show, and he just. Uh, <laughs> um, no, come on, uh, Fleetwood Mac, um, Stevie Nicks. Thank you, jeez. I got it. I got you, man. Uh, Steve Stevie Nicks is also performing uh, at, at this at this show, I remember and so I'm I'm standing backstage. Um, like I don't know, I, I don't. One of us is getting ready to go on, um, but. Uh, I said like two words to her, you know, it's kind of like, like, hi, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it was the weirdest thing, uh, for me anyway, because it was like, she's like sexy as hell, man. <laughs> like, right. and, but like, it wasn't anything. It was just like her aura, you know, yeah. it was just like, yes. oh, yeah. you know, like I was just, uh, yeah, kind of just like captivated. Um, and, and it was, it, it felt weird to me. It was just kind of like, like why why is this happening? Yeah, you <laughs> so start to believe like, in the whole witchy your thing. soulmate. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she was right though. I always wondered what it'd be like to meet her, and I feel like you just kind of you know crystallized it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it, was, it definitely like I don't know if she like does like some like seance before she's in public all the time, but uh, uh, it, it was definitely uh, yeah, yeah. Some people just have that. Like energy, I find a lot of people, a lot of perform, well, not just performers, but a lot of like powerful people. It's more based on energy. Like there's a certain yeah. energy or aura around people when you, it, you know, it's an undescribable something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, but for her, it was like attractive. It was like it wasn't just like like wow, you're cool. It was like I don't know. It was like, like Whoa. yeah, I, I need right. to bed this woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I was it almost sounds like you were up to like and then I blacked out and I woke up and we were in this castle together and <laughs> I was in leather 
<laughs> there was one window open. It was weird. I was in a bathtub, a lot of ice. My kidney was gone. <laughs> Strange. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, man. There was a Good. goat. <laughs> we got one more favorite song to play and favorite song of all time. Mm. Oh, man, come on. Those are impossible questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a musician, so it's like, I don't know. Uh, I feel like it's like asking a baker what it's, what's his favorite cake. Yeah. Um, I, I love them all. I don't know. Um, and it's like yeah. it just depends on my mood, you know? Mm -hmm. depends on my mood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it could easily be like like – Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or it could be like Love's Need of Love, you know, like Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, there's a million songs that could be. Um, Here's a better, I, I got a better way to kind of phrase it, because I wanted to ask like a couple people this kind of stuff that have been on the show, because we always have guests that kind of mention other guests some way, like without even realizing it, like everybody just kind of knows each other, or they're inspired by their music. Is there a song that kind of you use to pump yourself up? Hmm. Uh -oh. you're like oddly enough stevie nicks uh, <laughs> landslide as depressing as it is yeah. gets me there <laughs> um now i'm laughing because i just had a flashback to being like 16 years old playing football and yeah. um like in the gym like it was a, uh, it was always like you know, we blast more human than a human, Rob Zombie. You know, yes. Uh, oh, like, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's a great answer. That's fucking perfect. That is perfect. Um, I mean, it, it's not current, but uh, right, right. It, was that... <laughs> it doesn't have to. We be. go out on stage. Yeah, <laughs> especially the bigger the show, the louder it is. More yeah. human than a human. <laughs> 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 um, uh, it's, when I was 16, mine was Wilson Phillips' Hold On. So, I mean, I you got a better song. You got a bit. No, I'm just kidding. It really was. Uh, <laughs> like, why do you got to shit on Wilson Phillips? Uh, <laughs> I'm not. It's all relative. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. So good, man. Yeah, man. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all depends on the setting for me. Sure. I'm thinking like I um I have a I have a. a car that i'm really grateful to have it's a 1962 buick scotlark oh wow um, convertible cool. and uh so when From my you know, cousin when vinnie right yeah exactly yeah. Cool. i was like why do i know I the know. name of the <laughs> you've never seen that movie <laughs> i have <laughs> but i don't remember oh. if that was the car or not. that was it, like, it was a buick yeah. the buick skylark i don't know if it was a 62 only was two a... cars had pause attraction <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a line from the movie. That's a line. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in twenty years. <laughs> and it was a green it Buick Skylark, wasn't it, or something like that? It came in like yeah. two colors. Yeah, there were only yeah. Two we'll send this to Marissa Tomei. She'll come in and do it. <laughs> we actually have uh, one of the, the one best, of the cast man. members from it <laughs> coming on, Ooh. which I think. Will yeah. Be oh my god, I'm such an asshole. It's my. I guess. love it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'll cut that out. Oh, yeah, we have a. Uh, <laughs> we have Austin uh, Pendleton coming on the the public oh, defender. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, I was like, I got excited. I booked it. I'm like who? <laughs> like I had a surprise for him. Yeah. <laughs> I completely. I don't know what's going on, dude. I'm just fucking out of it. We've been in a pandemic, Tom. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so the whole point of bringing up the car was uh, oh, when yeah. I'm driving that car. Uh -huh. uh, I love to put on some Sam Cooke, and uh, like you send me is uh, oh. is the one. I don't know, it just like sets me in the in the right space. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. If I'm cruising, that's a good one. That's a great one. That's, that's a great song for real. Yeah, you know it's so funny. Music. I think there's there's like a whole conversation to be had. How like everybody like has a different connection to a song because like when you talk Ooh. about you send me putting you there, I see it bringing me to a different part in my life that like yeah. You know, and I'm like, that. this is where that takes me. So I feel like everybody, mm -hmm. like, especially iconic songs, so like, it'll take everybody to this own space. It's like a, it's like a smell. You ever smell something? Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm in my grandmother's house. Yeah. Like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's amazing is if you put on a certain song and then you get a smell, you deal with a memory. Like, <laughs> yeah. You ever had that happen? Like, that, yeah. that happens to me sometimes. Like that. Sometimes you like major, transport. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, sometimes it'll about... trigger something that you don't even know is there. Yeah. 
Like yeah, you forgot yeah. it. It was buried in the subconscious and then it just hits you. Right. And it brings you there. And then you have to go to therapy for like six months. <laughs> 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 I thought I put that away. <laughs> 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 My roommate and I used to talk about uh, like how certain albums were legitimately like sources of time travel. Because if I mm. if I have like a certain album from like my high school days, I yeah. can just pop that yeah. whole thing in, and I remember ev- where I was, the school bus, yeah. first time I heard it, a dance, and like it. That's a time capsule. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We've had this discussion. That was my first CD. That was my first. It was my first album too. Like, oh no really? way. That's yeah. sick. That's we, crazy. Actually, it was a it was a cassette for me. But. See, see, and I remember, what were your I first cassettes? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Do you Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. Dude, that, that was, was your first one. one? I yeah. had we were just talking about who were we talking about this with the other day. A guest that we had on first cassettes, remember? Yeah. yeah it yeah. was because I, I had uh uh mine was Green Day, Dockin, and fuck, I can't remember the next one. <laughs> Ace of Base, I think, oddly enough. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I know it's a we yeah it's all He's over from the place. Jersey, for sure. I'm from Jersey, yeah. <laughs> Born in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, raised in New Jersey. Ace of Base had to be in Jersey. Oh, Ace of Base was absolutely a Jersey thing. It was a, it I was a, a single. Yeah, yeah. I saw, everybody I had the single. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, that's what it was. It wasn't like the it whole. It opened up my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Ace of Base. That song brings me to a little club that we used to go to, like in high school, that Ooh. they would serve like underage. And I saw this. That'll bring me right there. Crazy. That's me. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> so nuts. nuts. Here's the question, though. Did you have to hide your record? <laughs> because no. there was no way I was able to, like, there was no way in hell that my parents would be able to, like, if they ever found that, I would be dead. Right? Like, I didn't uh... have to hide mine. All right. I could give you, I could give you a good story. So now, like, my, my career path, <laughs> real good. quick, how it ran, was when I was a kid, like, I, I remember getting doggy style because my parents didn't know they had no idea so i got it as a Your christmas parents didn't know present. doggy style Let's they didn't i guess they were just like this this is what this is what we're gonna get them like i gave them a list of albums. <laughs> so i think they were just going through the motions of getting it That's not amazing. realizing wow. the music that i'm playing right so i remember in now this will date us how old we are it was one of those CD changers at the top. You put it in, and it had like three CDs that would. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it had yeah. thirty-six chambers with Wu Tang, wow. Doggy Style, and it, I don't even know what the third one was. And I remember my father hating, it, like all the cursing, this and that. He yeah. wanted to like throw it out of the window. It's like, what is this music ever gonna do for you? Fast forward, like within like four years later, I left. I left my day job and I was a DJ, like in an ent- entertainment company doing very well doing better than the like physical therapist that i was i was a physical therapy attendant i'm going to school for that and then breaking off into entertainment and being like and he's like all right i guess it did it for you i guess i guess you did <laughs> nice find a way to make like what you loved you know it yeah but it's yeah so yeah yeah so well, i didn't have to hide story, it man. but yeah it wasn't uh it wasn't it was frowned upon it wasn't embraced. yeah yeah you know but yeah it changes because once people start seeing it and it was a real to me it was a real art form and I, i'm big into like yeah. old school music and yeah. i love like the transition so that's why like sam yeah. cook a lot of the motown stuff a lot of this like oh, funk man. era is so good so good yeah yeah it, my dad was a strict southern baptist marine right so yeah I would you weren't getting to play that at all 36 chambers of pain had my father <laughs> discovered that that was <laughs> <laughs> That torture yeah. sequence on the album, they would have done oh, everyone. That's too. you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, my not God. in my house is what uh is what I grew up hearing from my father. <laughs> wow, damn. <laughs> no, oh, I wish man. I could say I, I should just lie and be like, yeah, my parents made me hide the Ace of Base. <laughs> They were like, I got none of that. They were like, fine. They didn't give a shit. They were like, he's listening to I Saw the Sign. He's going to be fine. They didn't know what Green Day was, so it was okay, too. It had a smiley face on the cover, so it was deceptive. I love that your parents didn't know Doggy. Did they just think it was the soundtrack to the Pound Puppy movie? And they were like, it's adorable. He loves Doggy stuff. It's just it's a cartoon dog at a doghouse. Yeah, they... What are you going to do? <laughs> It's a cartoon dog in a doghouse with like a female dog's butt sticking out. Of the yeah, dog. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, Vivid, man. Yeah. God forbid you open up the inside comic. It was like really graphic. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh man, it's That's so good, great. bro. It's so good. Ugh. That see, and it brings it right back around to how like unifying music is, right? Like we yeah, all yeah. like have such like it's so unifying. Like yeah. right. And, and it doesn't matter what the music is. Stevie Nicks, Snoop Dogg, no. Ace of Bass. Like we all have like no matter who it is, they have an impact on everybody. Yeah, what, yeah. What's right? cool is when you find out that people love, like people that you think are really badass, love the same music that you do too. You know what I mean? Like even though there's different genres, yeah. but they have an appreciation for Fleetwood Mac or all those people coming up too. Because when sure. you're a kid, you get shit on. Like people are so like picky about their music, they get like shit. You know, you get you kind of hide your shit sometimes. Whatever, if it's not what everybody else is listening to. And then you kind of see the people that you like talk about everybody else in the industry because they just appreciate the art. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just gr- Like, we were talking to Doug Stanhope the other day, and I ma- wanted to tell him, and I didn't get to. But I remember I grew up loving the Counting Crows. Still love them. I've gone to see them before. Right, yeah. But it's not one of those, like, y- you know, you say that to people, and they're like, really? I don't know why, but they just have that kind of, like, oh. you either love them or hate them in the 90s. And I guess, like, a lot of my friends, like, oh, not, didn't really care for them. But I love the Counting Crows. But I remember listening to Doug on a podcast and uh, he was like, yeah, man, he's like, you know, people are so, you know, uh, particular about things they hate now. He's like, like, I just don't want to hear how you don't like me because I love the Counting Crows. And I was like, he loves him, too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Doug's such a badass. And I was like, a, I was younger at the time. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. And then after that, I was like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Who knows now? <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I feel like you well, don't. We get, weren't you get... allowed to... Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was okay. going to say, I feel like you don't get that from people that are artists or understand like an artistic yeah. vision. Because like anybody that's done it, God bless them, they've done it, right? Yeah. I think yeah. people will hate on things if they, I think if they have like a repressed, yeah. I never. Like if they weren't the one to jump on that flight and right. take the chance mm-hmm. at it, right? And that's what makes them hate because they're like, oh, people will only tell you can't do because they don't believe in themselves, right? It's their sure. own mind yeah. trapping them where they're at. Yeah. 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 You know, but that's sorry, cool. go ahead, Jake. I didn't want to cut you off either. No, I mean, I guess I was going to say something along those same lines of like, like, you know, when I was a kid, we weren't allowed to listen to it. Like, my dad was like super, super strict. So it was uh, gospel music. Uh-huh. Uh, like, you know, Shirley Caesar, uh, you know, eventually like, uh, like, well, Andre Crouch and like um, Al Green's, uh, like, you know, the Reverend stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's two different Al Green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh and that like classical music and marching band music you know like john wow. Souza, right so like, that, that was it that was it in my dad's house um so by the time i was like sneaking out to like venture off i was yeah. wide open man it was like whatever yeah. whatever is not that i'm into it you know yeah um and and, and it, it created a big world of discovery for me you know but yeah. uh yeah i mean i guess you know it's kind of along the lines of what you're just saying in terms of um yeah. I, uh, I I didn't hate anything, <laughs> so yeah. I was able to yeah. just embrace everything, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. that's what gives your music so much depth, right? Because there's so much there. Like it's mm. it it's taking in everything, and then yeah. expressing who you truly are. It doesn't put a limit mm. on you. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, and obviously the spell that Stevie Nicks cast over you is helping mm. a great deal. Uh, <laughs> you wait for the next single, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and spells getting cast on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! It's been a fucking blast having you on, man. Thank you so much for staying as long as you did my too. It was, uh, yeah, man, such a pleasure. So real. much fun. Um, well, we're gonna come out. When are you when are you in New York again? You said March. Yeah, March third. March third. Cool. A hundred percent. We're either going to be the city winery or the stone pony. I, I'm cool. with making it happen. Yeah, for sure. Sounds great, man. That's yeah, awesome. man. Looking Before forward to it. There. Absolutely, right. man. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming yep. out with Thanks us. Thanks for tonight, coming man. out, man. See you yeah, soon. My man. pleasure. All Peace. Right, brother. Dystopia tonight.